Showtime. Okay, we'll call the meeting to order. First item is invocation by Pastor Don Tejima, Mountain Valley Church, and that'll be followed by a Pledge of Allegiance led by Brady Cabral. Join me as we honor God our Father. Word, your word says, unless the Lord builds the house, its builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchmen stand guard in vain. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Praise him, all you peoples, for great is his love toward you. And the faithfulness of our Lord endures forever. That if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault. And it will be given to him. But when he asks... He must believe and not doubt, because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That man should not think he'll receive anything from the Lord. He's double-minded, unstable in all he does. But blessed is the man who perseveres under trial, because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to all who love him. We ask on behalf of the mayor and the town council that you, Almighty God, would bestow your wisdom upon each as they govern and rule the affairs of Prescott Valley. We would ask for your blessings of health, not only over each of them, but their households, and that you would watch over their comings and their goings. Bless them as they bless this community with their service. And we petition your favor, not only upon the mayor and council, but on all those who serve our town, and especially your protection upon our first responders and those who keep our town secure and safe. And we ask your protection upon our schools, the teachers, administrators, and students. You're worthy of all our petitions, O God, because you rule in the heavens and on the earth which were created by you. May each of us strive to love you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love each other as we love ourselves. These things we humbly ask in the name of Jesus Christ, who died for our sins, was buried, and is risen from the dead. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. All right, Prescott Valley, please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation. Under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Brady. Okay, next item is uh, roll call. Diane? Mayor Skoog? Present. Vice Mayor Nye? Here. Councilmember Anderson? Here. Councilmember Grossman? I'm here. Councilmember Mallory? Here. Councilmember Rooney? Here. Councilmember Whiting? Here. We have a quorum, Mayor. Thank you, Diane. Okay, now schedules, announcements, and presentations. Kafma, call statistics chief Scott Freitag. Chief, you're up. Diane, is there a place to plug it in? Just pull one out. Mayor, Council, I appreciate the opportunity to uh, come before you this evening. Scott Freitag, Fire Chief, Central Arizona Fire Medical Authority. Um, I'd just like to start by saying I'm kind of surprised I'm before the police department because Sergeant Coffin made it pretty clear last night at Prescott Valley uh, Citizens Academy that it's the police department who gets there first, secures the scene, and then rolls out the red carpet so the firefighters don't get their shoes dirty. So... I know. Yeah, I see them all behind me. I feel the eyes. 
It's okay. I brought him donuts recently. It's okay. <laughs> With a nice sympathy card. And, and again, I'm still sorry about Krispy Kreme. So uh, I'm here before you tonight just to go through the, an update on where we're at with our call, call statistics. Sorry, call statistics for 2018 through June 30th. I did update a little bit to take them through September, but just to give you an idea where we're at, I'll just press the button. So what you can see by the numbers that I'm putting up in front of you right now is that since 2014, we've seen an increase in our call volume by about 4% every single year. Last year was the first year that we had a month where we went over 1,000 calls per month. So far this year, we've gone over 1,000 calls per month for four months. And every month, we've had more calls than we had the year previously. So what this reflects is really the growth in the area, specifically in Prescott Valley, and you'll see that. Uh, in another slide when we do a comparison to uh, the last four years and where we're at in 2018. This slide's a breakdown by call volume or call type. Um, other, a lot of people look at other and they think that it's snake calls and, and bee calls. And really, snake calls and bee calls make up less than 1% of our total call volume. And if somebody calls for bees, unless they're being attacked or in, in some way threatening, then we won't respond. We recommend that they call a beekeeper. If they call for a snake, unless it's holding them hostage in their house, we may not go. Uh, I'm originally from St. Louis. I've only lived in Arizona for five years, but what I've come to find out is they live here, and we have to live with them. So, well, we try not to go on too many of those. Uh, our EMS calls, we're running about 65, almost 66%. Fires are about 1.6%, but as you'll see later, uh, the fire calls are up uh, for this year, and we've lost a total of about $3.5 million worth of property due to fire so far, with one fatality and two injuries. This slide is calls by stations, and I, I direct you to three of the fire stations, so Engine 50, Truck 50, Engine 53, and then Engine 58. And what you'll see is uh, they have the highest number of calls uh, per unit out of all 10 of our fire stations. Those three units are within about a mile and a half of each other here in the heart of Prescott Valley. And the reason that's important is this next slide, which goes to reliability ratings for the fire stations. When we look at response reliability, national standards tell us when we hit 70%, that we have a problem and we have to start doing something to address it. Uh, the way we approach it is when we start getting down into the 70s, then we have to start thinking about how are we going to handle this call volume because it's just continually increasing. Uh, when I was before you uh, at the last meeting, I talked just briefly about the SAFER grant. The SAFER grant's bringing us five additional firefighter positions through federal dollars. Our hope is that on days when we have enough personnel, we can put up an alternative response unit at Station 53, again, in the heart of Prescott Valley, because that's where our call volume is, that's where it's really increasing, and that's where our reliability ratings uh, suffer. So if we can put up an alternative response unit, which is a smaller, less expensive, more maneuverable vehicle that uses fewer personnel, that will help reduce some of the burden on the, the larger, more expensive engines that we have. In places where they've employed this in other parts of the country, it's been very successful in helping control some of those additional needs in the future. Uh, Atlanta Fire Department's one of them I can cite that has tried the alternative response unit model and it's worked very well for them. So calls by municipality, you can see that Prescott Valley makes up a majority of the calls that we run as an agency. Uh, we're on track this year to run uh, over 12,000 calls out of our, our 10 fire stations. And if you look down at 2014 where we ran 20, just over 2,300 calls in Prescott Valley, um, so far this year we've run 3,200. And that's as of the end of June. So it just continues to increase. These are just some of the different types of incidents, the costs related to them. As I said, nearly 3.5 million in property loss, that's structural loss, and then 32,000 in, in passenger vehicles. I'm not sure where the train fits into that. Uh, I don't know how we assess that damage. 
I've never dealt with a train before, so. When we look at the uh, response time analysis, what we're seeing is that our rural response times are right where we want them. We're actually doing pretty good in those areas, but if we reflect back on the reliability ratings and the call numbers, you see that our engines in the rural areas are available more often than the engines in uh, our more suburban areas like Prescott Valley. What we're seeing in the suburban response time is that we're, we have an increase in response times and that's not what we want to have happen. That's where we think the alternative response unit taking some of the lower acuity calls and maybe responding to some of the alarm soundings. Kind of like the police department showed when they changed their approach to alarm soundings, we have the same issue. A majority of them are false. Unless we receive more than one call for a fire alarm sounding, when we get there, it, it ends up just being a false alarm. So if we can send a smaller unit to check on that rather than a, an engine, that'll be better for us and it keeps that engine available for the bigger calls. That's just a nice aerial photo of the viewpoint fire, which is all grown back and looks very nice now. So with that, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. I, I appreciate your time. Good. Questions, anyone? Marty? Or, I'm sorry, Ryan. Uh, Great. I do. Um, I understand that Prescott Valley has the most calls, but I'd be curious if you have uh, any per capita numbers, because we also have the largest population. Correct. Yeah, I, I don't have the per capita numbers, but really the call volume follows the per capita. So Prescott Valley being the most populated and the fastest growing, and one of the fastest growing in the state of Arizona, if not the fastest, um, we expect to see the increase in call volume. Uh, our concern and what we're looking at is how do we address this in the future? And so we work with your developers as well as uh, your town manager and others here to figure out where do we need to look in the future? And we look along Granville, we see, or along Glassford Hill, we see Granville growing, we have Jasper growing behind it. We actually set up a meeting with the city of Prescott on November 6th because the city of Prescott is growing this way as well. And so we're gonna sit down between the two agencies and discuss what are appropriate ways for us to move forward as in placing fire stations for future growth. Thank you. Marty? Yeah, I just want to uh, reemphasize one of the comments that you made about the alternate response vehicle. Uh, for those of you that might not have caught on, but most of the re most of the uh, call outs are for a medical response, and having an alternate response vehicle, which is much smaller than one of the giant trucks, their response time will be a lot quicker, and they're set up to do you know the the good EMS uh, call. So uh, it's going to help the community as well as the, uh, the fire department. And I just want to make sure everybody is aware of that and uh, how beneficial it is going to be to the community. Thank you. And, and if I may, I'd, I'd point out something we discussed last night at the Citizens Academy is that usually your police officers will arrive a minute or so before our engine. And the implementation of the Narcan program for your police officers has made a significant difference in uh, outcomes for some of the overdose patients uh, that we see in this area. And that, that partnership's been fantastic uh, with the police department. Good. Mary, Mary, you got a comment? Well, Chief, I just want to say I appreciate you bringing this information to us. And uh, definitely being out there and every day, you can definitely see the growth just from the traffic. And um, just appreciate all that, what all of you do every day. and. Uh, I don't know where this community would be without that terrific wall of blue back there. So thank you. Good. Absolutely. Uh, Jody. Thank you, Mayor. Chief, I would just echo what Council Member Mallory said. It's the, just the presence of the fire authority here and our personnel, you know, here in public service. Thank you very much. I do have a question in regards to the incident summary. Sure. You lay out the different types of calls that go out. What are you seeing trending over time? We're seeing an increase right now in motor vehicle crashes. Uh, we're seeing an increase in structure fires. Um, and usually both of those are a result of increasing population in the area. You have more traffic, you have more people out there, you're gonna have more motor vehicle crashes. You have more people, you have uh, aging homes. 
uh, you're going to end up seeing more structure fires. The problem we have with the structure fires right now is none of them seem to be connected, really. There's not a pattern that we can go out and say, hey, we're having a problem with kitchen fires. Let's do some education on kitchen fire safety. It's just a number of random things that are causing these fires. So we just we keep looking for patterns to see where we can help. Any other uh, questions? Mike? Yeah, I just had one question. I saw an article in the paper not long ago regarding our ambulance uh, uh, provider, and I'm, I'm wondering, is there a protocol between fire and the ambulance in terms of uh, handling medical emergencies when you're on scene? Do you take charge and then pass that off to ambulance, or is there such a protocol? Just wondering. Sure. There is a protocol. We work closely with Lifeline, as uh, do your police officers. Um, usually we are on the scene first, so we'll arrive, we'll take control of the patient. If it's a critical patient, we may maintain uh, patient care and control through transport to the hospital, and our medics will transport with the ambulance. If it's a, uh, a less critical patient, someone that doesn't need our uh, medics to ride to the hospital with them, then we'll transfer patient care in the field to Lifeline Ambulance. And that wouldn't change with your alternate response units? No, it would, be this, it, it would be the same. Uh, we only transport at times when uh, Lifeline doesn't have ambulances available or in one instance when they arrived and then left the scene uh, here in Prescott Valley. So we, uh, we transported that patient since apparently we weren't going to get an ambulance. Other questions, anyone? Anything else, Chief? No, sir, I'd just like to say, uh, you know, we appreciate the partnership with the town. We appreciate the partnership with your police department. We give each other a hard time, uh, as we did last night at the, the Citizens Academy or when I may drop something off for Chief Gerald in jest. But uh, we have a great working relationship, and I know our personnel on the street really appreciate your officers and everything that they do. Even uh, Captain Nick, who's here on the behalf of the police department, but he actually works for us. <laughs> Good. We'll accept them anyways. <laughs> so thank you very much. You're doing a great job. We appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, next we have uh, AGIC People's Choice Award, Larry Prentice and uh, Tyler Lehman. Do I pronounce that right? Lehman? Gentlemen. Norm, you're going to do it? Twenty minutes. Twenty seconds, Norm. <laughs> Use the microphone. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I did want to call attention. We've had some significant awards here in public works. Uh, I see recognition from the uh, professions that each one of our particular departments are recognized. First, what I want to do, I brought up uh, Larry Prentice and Tyler Lehman. They're our GIS department. So they've uh, been recognized for a very significant thing called the AGIC People's Choice Award. Let me back up a little bit. Council may recall when we um, engaged in uh, our five-year street enhancement program. We're back to the fall of 2015. Um, we said, well, our public asked for, we want better road maintenance, and we need to deliver that in a cogent type of arrangement to understand what we were looking at. So I challenged Larry at the time. I said, Larry, I need your help presenting uh, townwide our 260 miles of roadways. We need to come up with a pavement maintenance enhancement program and match the funding to it. Well, Larry, um, True to form, uh, always enjoys the challenge. So if you recall, I came to council with many different exhibits talking about all the roadways we have that were on an 11-year program. And uh, we decided to tackle that at $2 million a year, and we're in our year three of our five-year program. And uh, you may recall all the pretty colorful exhibits. Well, they made a lot of sense. I've been presenting those things at all to the public, and I don't have to wave my arms as much because they just speak for themselves. It's very good detail about what these particular exhibits have done. Let me uh, cut to what um, the recognition was. Was The exhibit you see here up above was, I always thought Larry did great work and uh, always appreciate it, but well, Larry says, you know, I wanted to present our five-year street enhancement program to his uh, group of professionals, being the uh, graphic information system, the GIS. And this exhibit you're seeing above, Larry uh, presented at his annual um, GIS meeting which is made up of all the peers, all the GIS professionals across the state meet, and they exchange ideas, and they talk about what they do and innovations. In addition, that part of what they do is they have a particular um, breakout session that they uh, present exhibits and maps and the story it tells. 
well, Larry uh, presented and Tyler worked up this particular exhibit. This is real world stuff. This is our street enhancement program. You can see all the different colors representing the years. Well, uh, pleased to say that amongst their, their peers, they were chosen for the People's Choice Award. That means not only is this great work, but it's recognized from GIS professionals across the state that they said this is absolutely excellent work and very much so on what this map presented. And uh, it's right here in Prescott Valley on what they present. And so this particular map won the People's Choice Award by their peer professionals. I lost that one, huh? Hold on, see? Even need more help from the GIS department. That's what we're looking for. Well, with that, we're not seeing it. What it was was the, the award, the certificates that Larry and Tyler were represented and uh, it's the People's Choice Award, and very proud of the work they do, and it was recognized statewide. Larry, you want to add anything? <laughs> I feel safe tonight. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> uh, no, thank you, Norm and Council, Mayor and Council, for having us tonight. Uh, it's a, um, truly an honor um, to be recognized by our peers across the state and for some of the professional work that we do here day in, day out. And... Um, it's just normal business to us, but it's need to be recognized for sure for some of the quality work that we do here. So it's an honor to share that with you guys and hope we can continue doing that great service. Any questions? Well, any questions, anyone? Uh, Laura? I don't have any questions, but <clears throat> um, my generation has an expression of man of many parts. Here we'll have to plural that, men of many parts. Just recently at the town of Legion Cities, you created the backdrop for us. And we wanted a big 40th anniversary, and all we did was say, Larry, can you do it? And Larry says, how big? How many? And that's the spirit in which I personally want to honor you. Over the years, I can't even remember all the times your department created a piece of art for us. And I bet there's very few people in this room know about that. So thank you, gentlemen. Any other questions? Uh, Jody? Larry, I know that you and I have worked together in the past, and I'm not surprised that you all got this award. Great work. You continue just to shine. Thank you so much. Rick? Well, I'm sure that mo most of the time you guys probably feel that your work is taken for <laughs> granted, but believe me, it's not. We, we do appreciate everything that you do for us. Uh, like everyone here has said, you know, anytime we've needed something, we know where to go to, and we know we can depend on a quality prod, a pro, uh, product coming back to us. And this is just a, another example of that. And thank you very much for everything that you guys do. Laura? I, I forgot something, Larry. This happened such a long time ago, you may not remember it, but some of us wanted to know how many fire hydrants we had and where they were. Well, you were the go-to guy. Yeah. <laughs> Good, thank you. Any other comments? Tyler, you got your 20 minutes. <laughs> this is my sidekick, Tyler. He does a really good job of working on our data and making sure it's up to date and complete so we can present things like this. So kudos. Your comments, Tyler? Um, I wasn't really prepared to speak, but just I enjoy I enjoy doing uh, I enjoy working aside Larry and and Norm and you know uh, giving you guys something to to smile about it. it you know, it, uh, I I enjoy it so every day. So I'm happy to happy to do it. So thank you. Well, thank, you. thank you, Norm. Any other comments? 
Mike? Yeah, I just want to say what, what you do is very important, only from the standpoint of understanding of our citizens in terms of what we're all about. And obviously, uh, this is a big issue. I think Norm would, would agree that people want to know how our pavement uh, is uh, maintained and upgraded. And this really makes it uh, visual and easy to understand. I think that's the case with most of the things you do. So we appreciate your efforts and congratulations. Thank you. Anyone else? Anything else, Norm? A congratulations, gentlemen. <laughs> Next, and I believe Norm has this one too, facility management professional design designation, Joshua Nusham. Squad. <laughs> there they are. Picture we're looking yeah, there for. We go. To come up. Mayor, the next significant team I'd like to recognize is Josh Newsom for his uh, achievement in the facilities department. And uh, what Josh, the professional association he belongs to, or part of facilities management, is IFMA, the acronym, or the International Facility Management Association. So Josh engaged in um, advancing his particular um, credentials. And what he uh, did through the um, management association was he uh, pursued the facility management professional designation. And what that meant was over the last six months, he took uh, four training courses. Uh, those courses consisted of finance and business, operations and management, project management, and leadership and strategy. Now, if you know Josh, he's uh, you know, very much a hands-on guy, and this is a big challenge for Josh to not only go to the two-day classes for a total of eight days, but he also had to take a test. And Josh, at times, has um, you know, conquered the test because not only does uh, he uh, quite a craftsman, he also can demonstrate that his ability to um, you know, understand the uh, technology with it and um, you know, show those credentials. So what we're recognizing uh, Josh for tonight is uh, he attained his facility management professional designation. As you can see that this national um, designation, and uh, he took that down in the valley and just wanted to recognize the great job he does and the preventive maintenance programs and all the particular work uh, Josh does to back up whatever particularly he does has got a um, you know, good uh, maintenance plan and a life cycle and also uh, putting the dollars to what that's going to be. So does a great job of that, and this particular designation is uh, you know, just one of the many accolades that, that Josh has, has obtained here in his position with the facilities department. Josh, you want to add anything? No comments, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> Any uh, okay. questions, anyone? Uh, Mary? Oh, I just wanted to say thank you, and thank you to all the department. You know, Norm, you guys have your work cut out for you, especially the last few years we've been doing a catch-up program out there. Um, really hammering in on all these roads and everything and uh, it's been a lot of work and um, a lot of trials but you know you've done a fabulous job appreciate you guys you're the ones that help us get from A to B you're the ones that help get all this traffic moving and uh, you're important so thank you thank you Mary anyone else Marty yeah I just I just want to back up to what Mary said uh, the uh, Public Works Department, you're the unsung heroes. If there is an event happening in Prescott Valley, okay, uh, you have to coordinate with our police department to direct tra traffic, set up the barriers. Uh, <clears throat> recently, we had a 5K run, and you had to set all that up. You did the run up the hill. So it's the Public Works Department that actually, you know, does most of the work and the police just stand out there and look good, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Thank you'll you. pay. You'll pay. Laura? Um, I particularly want to thank all of you for being out in the cold, wet weather, the hot weather. And right now you're out there stringing up decorations. And I did stop and say thank you to one of the teams this week. But I just want to thank all of you. Um, you are our unsung heroes. You are out there, but I don't think people understand how critical what you do for us all. 
So I noticed that we had some new decorations for Christmas. I noticed we had some decorations that we've had that have been moved to another location. That all takes effort. It doesn't happen just because it happens. So thank you, gentlemen, all of you out there as well. Good. Any uh, my, uh, mic? Yeah, I just want to lend my congratulations. It's nice that uh, we have employees that take the commitment and uh, follow that leadership path. So we're looking forward to seeing you in the future in a, in a leadership position. Uh, uh, obviously, uh, a step above what you're doing now. So congratulations and appreciate your uh, willingness to do that. Jody? Josh, thanks for taking the initiative on that. You know, it's not something that you just it just comes to you. You have to get out. It's an active thing to be able to go to that next level. And thank you. I appreciate it. And I also saw your picture today. I was looking at the employee gala, so I saw several of your pictures today. And uh, Josh, you were having a good time, and that's what it's about. <laughs> We have a good time together. We enjoy each other. We're a good family here, and thanks for being part of that family. Thank you. Rick? Anyone else? You're, you're up now, Joshua. <laughs> Thank you. I'll <laughs> smile. <laughs> Thank you, and congratulations. Keep up the good work. Okay, we go on next to a Medal of Valor, Sergeant Caswell, Officers Eller, and Davis. Chief, you are up. Thank you, Mayor and Council, staff, uh, community, to all of our law enforcement family that's here tonight to help us to recognize your family and friends. Thank you for taking time out of your day to be here. Um, I'd like to repeat what I said a couple weeks ago when we handed out a couple of awards, which is that we can't do what we do as officers without our law enforcement families supporting us. So thanks for being here. Tonight, uh, Mayor, if I, if I may, I'm going to invite uh, the recipients of both our Medal of Valor and Police Star down. So if I can read off those names. Uh, Danny Eller, Lead Police Officer Scott Davis, Sergeant Sean Caswell, Lead Police Officer Brian Sheldon, Detective Scott Rudolph, Sergeant Joe McCamish, CAFMA Captain Nick Fournier, Sergeant Kyle Hodder, Officer Chad Huber, Officer Wesley Dykeman, Officer Bobby Payne, and Cameron Loff Miller. And I'll clarify at the end of this citation which officers are receiving what type of recognition. The Medal of Valor is the department's highest award and may be awarded to officers who distinguish themselves by conspicuous bravery or heroism and in this case, it was certainly both above and beyond the normal demands of police service. To be awarded the Medal of Valor, an officer shall have performed an act displaying extreme courage while consciously facing imminent peril. The Police Star is awarded to employees who distinguish themselves by bravery or heroism, and again, it was certainly both above and beyond the normal demands of duty, but to a lesser degree than required for the Medal of Valor. And so on October, or excuse me, December 5th, 2017, the Prescott Valley Special Weapons and Tactics Team, SWAT, was called to assist our Partners Against Narcotics Trafficking Team, PANT, with a search warrant at the terraces at Glassford Hill Apartments. Over the course of several days, the SWAT team had been working with PANT, trying to find the right time to execute a search warrant on the residents based on the high potential for violence. The team was briefed that there was a high likelihood of violence due to the suspect making statements that he will not be arrested and will shoot it out with the police. It was reported the suspect had several firearms in his house. While en route to the residence, information was given to the team that the suspect knew the police were coming and he would not be taken alive. Due to the layout of the apartment, the approach to the residence put the team at a disadvantage. After getting into position, the door was breached and the suspect was seen running from the front door area. The suspect turned and pointed a gun towards team members. The officers gave commands for the suspect to drop his weapon, but he refused and kept the gun pointed at the team. Team members identified this lethal threat and discharged their firearms to stop the threat which resulted in the suspect falling to the ground. Since the suspect's infant child was in close proximity to the suspect, the child was immediately removed from the scene. Our SWAT team has an intergovernmental agreement with 
the Central Arizona Fire and Medical Authority, which assigns a certified paramedic to the SWAT unit. Our paramedic, firefighter Captain Nick Fournier, quickly assessed the suspect and stabilized his injuries. Due to the quick, decisive actions of all members of the SWAT team working collaboratively, this incident was resolved with no injuries to officers, firefighters, or innocent civilians. The actions of lead police officer Danny Eller, lead police officer Scott Davis, Sergeant Sean Caswell, and lead police officer Brian Sheldon are deserving of the Medal of Valor. And, and for their actions, Detective Scott Rudolph, Sergeant Joe McCamish, CAFMA Captain Nick Fort. The mic might have, there it goes. And for their actions, Detective Scott Rudolph, Sergeant Joe McCamish, CAFMA Captain Nick Fournier, Sergeant Kyle Hodder, Officer Chad Huber, Officer Wesley Dykeman, Officer Bobby Payne, and Cameron Loftmiller are awarded the police star. As the mayor said, if anybody wants to speak, they're welcome, but you've got to give us 20 minutes. <laughs> Seriously, though, you know, having been uh, a prior member of this team many years ago, um, I understand the commitment it takes to be a member of the SWAT team. Um, there's a lot of training and a lot of responsibility that the members of our team take on. And in a situation like this, they acted courageously in defense of their lives, and they did so decisively and with honor. Great job. Any other comment? You're looking for questions to uh, Mary? Oh, I just, I just want to say that for me, I mean, I am just so amazingly blessed and proud to live in this community. And there shouldn't be a citizen in this community that shouldn't be feeling proud to these people put their lives on the line every day for us and we need to support them and never waver never waver on this god bless all of you and your families we love all of you It is impossible to say that better than Mary Mallory did. <laughs> but I wish you'd do us the honor before you go back to your seats of allowing us to shake your hands and say an individual thank you. Rick? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I also can, can't add anything to what Mary said, but I do want to add my voice to it because... I certainly agree with everything that was said. You folks have done a great job for us. You represent the town well, and I am very proud to be a member in this community. Thank you. Marty? Yeah, I, uh, as a past president of the Police Foundation, uh, I take great honor in being able to uh, assist our police department in getting the supplies and materials that they need to do their job on a daily basis. Uh, Whenever uh, somebody approaches me to make a complaint about our police department, I always defend you 1,000%. There is no greater police force in Arizona than the one we have here in Prescott Valley. Uh, Jody? There are times to celebrate, and then there are times to celebrate, and this is one of those times. Greg, uh, Mike? Yeah, I just want to congratulate our officers for this achievement. It's not unusual in my perspective because I think uh, we see this. I see it more often than I think I've seen it anywhere else uh, in Arizona, and that's in our community. So as you know, your community is proud. Our council is proud of the uh, work you do, the education, the commitment, and the honor that you bestow upon our community. Congratulations. Any of your officers wish to comment? No? 
then we want the handshake. Where's the chief? Any, any more comments? Gentlemen, congratulations. Thank you so much. Hey, that's great. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. What a job. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you so much, sir. You're doing life saving now. Thank you. Appreciate it. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're wonderful. Thank you. Congratulations. Preloading, huh? Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Unbelievable. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Okay. One more comment, Chief. I'm saving awards. Just a couple more awards, Mayor. Oh, two more awards? Yes. Oh, okay. So if I can have Officer Matt Williams and Officer Wesley Dennison come down, please. So Officer Matt Williams and Officer Wesley Dennison are going to be awarded the life-saving ribbon tonight. It is awarded to recognize the actions of department personnel that result in the saving or preservation of human life that otherwise would have been lost without the employee's direct involvement. On August 18, 2018, at approximately 2 a.m., these officers were dispatched to an address on Horizon Way for a report of a female subject who was unresponsive and not breathing from a possible drug overdose. When Officer Wesley Dennison arrived on scene, he immediately saw the need to intervene as medical personnel from the fire department hadn't arrived yet. He began CPR after confirming that the female was in fact not breathing and had no discernible pulse. Shortly after, Officer Matt Williams arrived and saw evidence of a drug overdose around the female's person, so he administered a dose of Narcan. Shortly after the Narcan administration, the female began breathing on her own. Shortly after this, the fire department arrived and took over care of the female, who eventually began responding to them verbally. The quick and decisive actions of both officers Dennison and Williams played a direct role in saving her life, and they are certainly deserving of our life-saving award. Comments, gentlemen? No. Chief, good job. Okay, good. Okay, and another life saving award if Sergeant Caswell, Sergeant Roberts, Officer Layton Cooper's not here, but he's going to be recognized, and Officer Paul Hines could come down, please. Where's Paul? He had a pink badge on. He should stand out. <laughs> so this is another life-saving award. On September 10, 2018, Prescott Valley officers were dispatched to 4460 Romero Circle West for an agency assist for the fire department for a truck that had fallen on a male subject, and the male subject was stuck underneath the truck. Sergeant Caswell and Officer Cooper arrived on scene first where they located him underneath the truck. Efforts were made to use the jack to lift the truck, but the jack wouldn't lift high enough. Officer Hines and Sergeant Roberts arrived on scene next, whereupon Sergeant Roberts and Sergeant Caswell lifted the truck off of the male victim leader identified as Randall Flory. Officer Hines and Cooper were then able to pull Randall out from under the truck so the lifeline could start life-saving measures. As soon as the truck was lifted off of Randall and he was pulled out, he began breathing, although it was very labored. Randall was unconscious but continued to have trouble breathing. Lifeline was able to intubate Randall and then transport him to YMC where he was eventually stabilized. Again, due to the quick, decisive actions of our officers, Mr. Flory's life was saved. Great work.
Uh, Mayor and Council, I just want to say thank you for the opportunity to give these awards out you know, in front of our community. I think it's very important, and I do greatly appreciate Councilmember Mallory's comments and, and, and you all echoing those because we have an incredible police department full of incredible people. Our officers, our non-sworn, and our volunteers, they are so well-trained. They go out every day, and they put their lives on the line for us to keep this community safe. So I, I really appreciate this opportunity to thank them in front of you and our public. Chief, not only, the, not only the officers, but the staff. Thank you real much for a good job. Thank you. Thank you. We are so blessed. Oh, did you want to explain the... Uh, if you'd like me to, I can do it now. Sure. So um, the council, we're all given one of our cloth badges. Uh, we made this for the month of October. Some of our officers will be wearing it on their external vest carriers. It's pink and purple, and uh, most people are aware that October is both Breast Cancer Awareness Month and Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And so we wear these in honor of people who need support in those challenges. And we ask that if you have, especially in issues of domestic violence, that you consider reaching out to the police department. We have a victim assistance unit that is very well prepared to assist you at 928-772-9261. Thank you, Chief. Thank Chief. you, uh, Chief. Oh, Chief, could you introduce the young lady who's been passing out all these wonderful awards tonight? This is Mary Graceffa, the real Chief. <laughs> <laughs> Mary, Mary is our administrative supervisor, assistant to the chief, and she really, she keeps things running in the department, so we couldn't do what we do without her. You think Mary should make some comments? She... Good name. She, we I could like offer that. it. I don't know if she'd take us up. She's good. She's good. Huh? <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you, thank chief. You. I appreciate that. Okay. Next item is the uh, Chamber of Commerce. Brady, you are up. Room empty. Afternoon, Mayor and Town. Oh. I'll, I'll, I'll let them do away. their thing. <laughs> Walking ovation. <laughs> Can't take it personal. Yeah, really. Oh. Go ahead. <laughs> they... Mary, thanks for your help. Appreciate that. Uh -huh. One way to do it. <laughs> I think we'll have to recess for about 30 seconds here. Is that right, Brady? Exactly. Mm -hmm. I'm calling recess, not you, Mayor. <laughs> I know. I, <laughs> I think maybe you better get started. Okay. So my name is Brady. Uh, I work with the uh, Presque Valley Chamber of Commerce. Uh, as we know, Presque Valley is growing incredibly rapidly, and um, uh, as well as having people constantly moving to Presque Valley, we also have uh, businesses moving to Presque Valley every single day. I think we are um, just about at one of everything. Or if we're not there, we're really close. Um, tonight, I just want to introduce a couple of new businesses that we have uh, in the Presque Valley area. Um, and first, I'm going to lead off by introducing Bobby Custard with Pure Solar and Electrical. Thank you, Brady. So I'm here on behalf of Pure Solar and Electrical. We're a full-service electrical company, and we also specialize in solar. We are not new to Yavapai County. We have been in Yavapai County since 1974. However, we do have a new location here in Prescott Valley at 7129 East 1st Street, or the way people, most people are finding us is we're right next to Batteries Plus. So th that's my spiel. <laughs> Phone number. Phone number? Um, a great way to get a hold of us uh, at the office is 928-639-1267. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank, thank you guys for having me. I really and appreciate you being part of this. Your, your service to the community. All right, so if you have electrical or solar needs, be sure to give them a call. Um, next, in the, in the theme of October, um, I would like to introduce Shannon Fitzgerald. Um, she runs The Pink Project. Um, the Pink Project is a little thrift store in Humboldt, um, at the Humboldt Station. Um, most people um, 
we give them directions. It was the old barbecue place. That's so we moved into there. Um, the whole the proceeds from the thrift store we help people who are going through cancer treatments. Look a little closer to the mic. Oh, sorry, I know I don't talk very loud. Um, we help people who are going through cancer treatments. We help pay for utilities, uh, gas tune from treatment, um, whatever their needs might be while they're going through treatments. And it's not just breast cancer, but any type of cancer. Um, the thrift store kind of stemmed from my own journey when I had cancer uh, about two and a half years ago. I had breast cancer. And I needed help when I was going through my treatments. Um, I wasn't able to work for about nine months, and um, I was a single mom of four boys, and I just needed a little bit of help just to get through that time till I could get back to work and get back on my feet. And I decided at that point that there's got to be other people who are in my situation who needed just a little bit of help just to get through. And um, when Sam's Club closed, I took that opportunity, and I um, opened the thrift store. We opened June 30th. Um, we've been open for about three and a half months, and... Um, just the support that I've received from the community and other small businesses has been amazing. It's been overwhelming, actually. I didn't didn't realize, um, you know, not really being open long and getting the word out. You know, people still come in looking for ice cream and barbecue um, and, and realize we're there. And so it's just been great. And we run strictly on donations. Um, we Right now we can't accept clothing, shoes, or large appliances, but a lot of home decor, a lot of gifts. Um, People have been brought in so many nice things, antiques. Um, we have jewelry. Uh, just, you know, that's basically what we run on. It's nice. And for the month of October, we are putting together uh, feel-good gift bags for women who are going through treatments. Uh, we've gotten a lot of donations for that. Um, we've got a raffle at, a, um, at the smoke shop here in Prescott Valley at Smoking Things. They've, they're sponsoring a raffle for us. Tony's 2 has put together a big event for us on October 20th. Um, we're going to do a charity poker tournament. They're going to have drink specials. They're providing a live band. Um, we're having our ribbon cutting ceremony on the 24th. So we've got a lot of great events for October. Council, have any questions or comments? Uh, Jody? What are your hours and what would be a way we can get a hold of you? Um, we're open Tuesday through Saturday, 10 to 5.30, and on Sundays from 11 to 5. Good. Um, you can drop off donations, or if you have any questions, you can come by. If I'm not there, my mom's there. It's pretty much the two of us that run the store. Um, I don't know our phone number off, off the top of my head. Um, I do have a business card, which has, like, my mom's cell phone and my cell phone, because that's probably the easiest way to get a hold of us. Or if you know anyone who might need help, um, you know, we're... We haven't had the opportunity to help anybody yet financially. We did provide a dresser for a family who was going through treatments. Um, so if you know of anybody who needs help, um, we've actually have established enough that we are able to help people now. Any uh, other council comments, questions? Uh, that's just, that's Mary? wonderful. That is that is really wonderful. Thank I will you. be sure to come by. <laughs> thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Bravo. Brady, thank you for introducing these two good businesses to Absolutely. us. Absolutely, and you can, uh, you can call the Pink Project at 928-277-6724. Um, outside of that, it is October. We are getting into to spooky season, um, but when you're deciding where to do your trick-or-treating this month, um, know that we have a safe trick-or-treat happening at uh, the Prescott Valley Event Center. Um, it is massive. There were like 2,500 kids there last year. We're shooting for 3,000 this year, so... I look forward to seeing you out there, Prescott Valley. Thank you, Brady. Appreciate that. Okay, Council, got any other comments, communications you want to bring forward? Jody? I do want to remind our citizens, for those who might be watching, that the town is seeking qualified homeowners who need assistance with home repairs. And this would involve code violations, safety issues, weatherization, heating, and cooling appliances. The homeowners must have incomes. It's a qualifying thing for a certain percentage in this median income. For instance, a single person would be 21350 or 24400 for a household. These applications are available at the Community Development Department. For more information, they could contact Gary Davis, who's the project manager at 928-759-3058. These are wonderful programs for our citizens, and I wanted to highlight that. Thank you, Jody. Anyone else? Mike? Yeah, I just wanted to announce that there was something I saw in a, a newsletter that's distributed, I think, among employees and outside. In terms of a recognition, the town of uh, Prescott Valley has recently received, in terms of the seventh 
safest driving uh, community in Arizona. And it was done by an insurance company. Uh, they said they looked at uh, f all the communities. I think there's 91, 92, 93 communities in uh, Arizona, both cities and towns, and we were chosen as number uh, seven. So I think that we had that same honor in terms of one of the safest cities last year. This year we're one of the safest driving uh, communities, and we want to, again, say thank you to our police department and our citizens uh, in Prescott Valley. Thank you, Mike. Any other? If not, we'll move on to uh, <clears throat> consent agenda. And tonight it's uh, Mike Whiting's turn to read that. All matters listed under consent agenda are considered routine by the town council and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items. If discussion is desired, that item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered separately for discussion and possible action. The first item A, approving the September 20 work study minutes and September 20 special council meeting minutes. Item B, approving a new Series 10 liquor license for the Carnicera Garcia's Market LLC located at 8147 Spouse Drive. Rigoberto Garcia Rangel, applicant. Uh, item C, approving revisionary plat RP18-006 to reconfigure three lots, Prescott Valley Unit 8, lots 2511, 2512, and 2513, and the two lots, 2511R and 2512R, located on the west side of Manley Court, approximately 300 feet south of Manley Drive. Uh, item D, approving re revisionary plat RP18-008, combining Prescott Valley Unit 16, lots 6548R and 6550 into one new lot, 6550R, located at the northwest intersection of Laredo Drive and Sherrill Drive. Item E, approving change order number one to the construction contract with Mountain High Excavation LLC in an amount of 17000 $760 for the Stone Ridge Water Main Installation Project CIP number W426. Item F, approving the amendment to the Town Engineer Agreement with Dava and Associates for construction oversight services in the amount of $35,000 to monitor new subdivision infrastructure construction. Item G, approving the purchase of two 2019 one-ton pickup trucks under state contract pricing in the amount of $68,000. $99.18 from Sanderson Ford and approve the needed budget adjustments. And item H, accounts payable. Thank you, Mike. Anyone want to pull an item or do you want to approve it as a whole? May I make a motion to approve the consent agenda as a whole by electronic vote? Okay. Second. A second. We get a motion and a second. Will you set the vote, Diane? It's approved unanimously, Mayor. Thank you, Diane. Okay, then we go on to old business for action. Second reading of ordinance number 851 by title only. Uh, for the second reading, adopting by reference that certain public record purchasing procedure at amendments. Katie, do you have any comments on that? Could you use the microphone? <clears throat> I don't have any comments tonight unless any of you have any um, further questions. Council have any questions? Comments, commotions, promotions, demotions? We did note that you made the change that the council requested, and we thank you for that. Thank you, Katie. Thank you. <clears throat> any motions, commotions, demotions, promotions, anyone? I think that's going to die for lack of uh, okay. um, the, read, the reading. I need. Yeah, it's just a reading, second reading of the ordinance 851. Yeah, you're right. Uh, would you read the ordinance by, uh, by reference that certain public record purchasing procedure by title only? My fault. 
Ordinance number 851, an ordinance of the mayor and the common council of the town of Prescott Valley, a municipal corporation of Arizona, adopting by reference a document entitled Purchasing Procedure Amendments, declared by resolution number 2067 to be a public record, to amend town code sections 2-02-040, powers and duties of the mayor, 3-02-010, town manager, 3-04-010, purchasing procedure, 3-04-020, exclusive source, section 3-04-080, professional services, and section 3-04090, cooperative purchasing, and adopt a new section 3-04-100, intergovernmental pur purchasing, to, among other things, reflect current best practices recommended by the Governmental Finance Officers and Association and comply with revisions to applicable state and federal laws and regulations, providing that all other chapters, articles, and sections of the town code not herein reenacted or amended, amended shall remain in full force and effect, providing that if any provision in this ordinance is held invalid by a court of competent jurisdiction, the remaining vision the remaining provisions shall not be affected, but shall continue in full force and effect, and providing that this ordinance shall be effective 30 days after its passage and approval to according to law. Thank you. <laughs> that sounds like it was written by an attorney. The question is, shall the ordinance pass? Do you want to set the vote, Diane? That passes unanimously, Mayor. Thank you, Diane. Okay, we've gone to number nine, new business for review, comment, and or possible action. Number A, consideration of authorizing the reading of ordinance number 852, once by title only as an emergency measure, and to sign any agreement on the proposition 207, then place same on final passage for approving annexation of 4.3 acres owned by Phoenix Industries. Do you have any comments, Richard? Just share that last uh, month you held a public hearing. There were no uh, comments or expressions in opposition to this action. Uh, Kelly uh, Sodwell, who is uh, um, a uh, principal in the company, is available to answer any of your questions. He described last uh, week that properties adjoining this parcel are uh, in the town of Prescott Valley and owned by uh, the company and they would like you to move forward to annex the property. According to state law, we filed the necessary petitions. Those petitions were later signed and they've been put on record at the county recorder's office. This matter appears as an emergency uh, item on your agenda uh, only for the purpose of enabling it not to have to be read twice, and uh, but only uh, it does not waive, obviously, the uh, appeal process, which is afforded uh, by state law, where this would not go into effect for 30 days. Uh, to date, we've received no opposition to this request. Uh, the owner of the property is in the audience, uh, would speak at your direction. I would respond, uh, Mr. Mayor, to any questions you may have. Questions? Anyone? I think it's pretty clear. Now, there's three options for a motion. Anyone care to make one? I'll make a motion. Motion to read ordinance number 852 once by title only as an emergency measure and to sign any agreement on the proposition 207, then place the same on final passage by electronic vote. Second, anyone? I'll second, Mayor. Okay, a motion and a second. Would you set the vote? That passes unanimously, Mayor. Thank you. In that case, then, uh, uh, Diane, would you read read that the ordinance by title only? Ordinance number 852. An ordinance of the Mayor and the Common Council of the Town of Prescott Valley, a municipal corporation of Arizona, annexing to there certain real property containing approximately 4.3 acres lying in section 23 township 14 north range 1 west of the Gila and Salt River Meridian Yavapai County Arizona 
classifying all of the annex property for zoning purposes as M1, being consistent with the present Yavapai County zoning classification of M1, providing that the official town map and the town zoning map be appropriately amended and that a copy of this ordinance along with a certified annexation map be recorded in the office of the Yavapai County Recorder and declaring that this ordinance to be an emergency measure pursuant to Arizona Revised Statute Section 19-142B and Section 2-05-060 of the Prescott Valley Town Code. Thank you, Dan. Well, the next question is, shall the ordinance pass? Would you set the vote, Dan? Yes, Mayor. That's unanimous, Mayor. Thank you, Dan. Okay, we've gone to 9B, consideration of authorizing the Mayor to sign resolution number 2069, amending the Prescott Valley Customer Accounts Regulation. Mark, how are you? Good evening, uh, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Council Members. I'm here again to, uh, I don't have anything to add over the presentation that I I gave a few weeks ago at the last work study in regards to amendments and updates to the uh, customer accounts regulations. Uh, so at that, if there's any questions or comments I can answer, I'd be any more than questions, happy to do anyone? So. Very straightforward. Very straightforward. Very straightforward. Right. Okay. So Anyone got a motion or demotion? Or Mr. Mayor, I'd be happy to make a motion to authorize the mayor in his absence of vice mayor to sign resolution 2069, amending the Prescott Valley Customer Accounts Regulations. A second. second. Oh. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Would you set the vote, Dan? Yes, vice Mayor. Would you be at vote? Thank you. That's unanimous, Mayor. Passes. Thank you. Okay, we're going to see consideration of approving the agreement with Kimberly Horn and Associates in the amount of fifty-nine thousand five hundred seventy dollars for construction, design, and construction professional services for CIP number S four twenty two Civic Drive sidewalk. Bill, you got any comments on that? Yes, we just. Uh, um, just wanted to let you know, I think I presented a little bit about this uh, last week. Um, we're, we're looking at doing a sidewalk that will start and tie into an existing um, corner that we have at Winsong and uh, Civic Drive, and we extend down to Sungate uh, Villas and tie into what they've already done, then continue on down to the corner um, where we tie in with uh, uh, Civic Circle. We'll take that over to the uh, Ag Business and Equine Center. So we will complete that. They'll have a nice sidewalk for the entire area. Uh, we have put it out for uh, proposals, and uh, Kim Lee Horn was the one that we chose. And uh, we feel very confident they're going to do a good job for us. Good. Questions, anyone? Comments? Laura? Since we're going to have a little more weather than we usually have, that's going to have some impact, but I'm sure that we're all prepared, as well as Kimberly Horn. Yeah. Any other questions, comments? Mike? No, I just want to make a comment. I think the community is always uh, happy to see additional infrastructure going, especially a sidewalk, and I think uh, AEC will, will appreciate that as well as the Sungate Villas, so I think it's a great way to finish the loop in terms of the sidewalks for easy access. Yes, I think so. Jody? If there's nothing else, I would propose a motion. Everybody ready for that? I think they are. All right. I make a motion to approve the agreement with Kimberly Horn & Associates Incorporated in the amount of $59,570 for design and construction period professional services for the CIP number S422 Civic Drive Sidewalk. North Side Pedestrian Improvements, CDBG number 135-18. And I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Would you set the vote, Diane? That's unanimous, Mayor. Thank you. Okay, move on to D, consideration of awarding a contract for the 
installation of uh, hot melt crack seal materials uh, for the fiscal year 2018 and 19 to Graham Contractors Incorporated for the contract amount of $89,625. Norm, any comments? Yeah, Mayor, I've got a few comments just for a little bit of background. This is for the labor to install uh, the crack seal material. We did discuss this at work study last week. I showed you the three truckloads of material we already bought through state contract, which is approximately 75 tons, three big, large semi loads. Uh, you can see we did have great uh, competition from the contract community in order to install this particular crack seal with Graham contractors being the low bidder at $89,625. There was uh, seven bids received for this work. You see on the overhead here, this is particular crack seal. This is our pre-chip maintenance that we do as part of the chip seal in uh, starting next summer. So you, this is on the town website. Here's some of the streets that we're going to be applying crack seal to. This is typical maintenance procedure of asphaltic pavements to keep the water out and seal it with a polyflex asphaltic material. If a council uh, so chooses to award this uh, particular project tonight, uh, the contractor will get started here October 22nd and complete by the around the first part of December. So we do apply this very methodically in the uh, cold time when the cracks are contracted to the most. And uh, as I mentioned, this is part of our pre-check maintenance program. And just to show a little, uh, this is the company that uh, came to work for us here a couple years ago. This is Graham Contract. You can see this is the typical procedure for how you fill cracks. So they do that um, all over the particular streets that we will have uh, for this year's particular program. So this is just an exhibit of what the crack seal operation looks like. And of course, that's in anticipation of pre-chip maintenance. You can see some of the areas in anticipation of chip seal uh, for summer of 19 here. Uh, this coming July. So um, we have to answer any questions council may have about this uh, labor award. Mary? Well, actually, it, it's just a, a comment in regards and for anyone watching, you know, when, when we're doing these roads, Norm, it's pretty much a two-step two, two step process by every means. You know, you go this route and then come when the weather gets better, you have another route to do. I know a lot of times people kind of think that, you know, they see this one part and they're like, are you done, you know? <laughs> and no, we're not done, but it is a process, you know? And so am I correct on that? Oh, absolutely, Council Councilman Mallory. Um, you know, when we built this particular project, uh, you know, it was uh, still August and it was hot, humid, and we said, you know, just about every year we kind of bank on when we start that it's going to get cool. So yes, we're right on our timeline. But this is part of the process. That, uh, that we do at this particular time of year in anticipation in six months, we'll provide that full rotor with chip seal, which is the final icing of the uh, maintenance that we do on maintain our streets on a life cycle. All right, thank you. Any other comments, questions? Not, on, not necessarily on this, but it's nice to see that they're making a really good progress on Yavapai Road. You know, they're, they're working through that pretty quickly, so uh, I'm glad that's being done. Yes, that's the overlay that's part of our uh, enhancement, so yes, they did that yesterday. They got all the paving done. They're just cleaning up now. Any other questions, comments? Yeah, Mr. Mayor, I was just going to mention that I think Stone Ridge will be looking forward to the hot melt. I, you know, when you say that word, uh, it just it brings up other things <laughs> to brings me, in especially in the winter. But I know we're looking forward to that, and as you're saying, then uh, uh, during the summer next year, then we can expect to have the second process uh, applied as far as chip seal. So we always look forward to that in, in Stone Ridge. So I'd be happy to make a motion if we're all done, and that would be Everybody to... Are ready for a motion? Let to, it rip. Okay. Motion to award the contract for the application of hot melt crack seal materials for the fiscal year 2018-2019 to Graham Contractors Incorporated in the amount of $89,625. I'll second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. We set the vote. Councilmember Mallory, thank you. Passes unanimously. Passes, thank you. Good job, Norm. We're really thank happy you, Mayor. With you. Looking forward to getting started. The next one I'm going to uh, refer to our uh, Vice Mayor after to recuse myself from that. All right. Um, the North and South Deck of the Police Department roof is over 20 years old. And I'm reading the summary background because I think everybody enjoys that. <laughs> and becoming more prominent during the storm events. And we certainly are having those. Uh, 
the roofing has been evaluated and it has been determined that the best maintenance treatment is a silicone coating. Silicone coating work would be applied to approximately 6,000 square feet for providing the life for the roof another 10 years with a 10-year warranty. Um, do we have any questions? Do we have any Vice Mayor and I just wanted to call attention to the exhibit you see above the areas in pink there. These are the two flat decks that this particular silicone treatment is being applied to the police department roof. So as we talked about, it is a silicone seal and it's got a 10 year warranty and it's just part of the life cycle maintenance we do to roofing. Had great competition. We had actually six contractors bid on this and uh, staff is recommending that we award to the um, low bidder, which is Skytop doing business at Sunvec for $18,960. If awarded tonight, we anticipate the contractor getting started here real soon within the next week or two, and it'll take about a week to do this, this treatment work before, uh, you know, the cold of winter sets in. So we're uh, looking forward to providing this treatment and helping the life cycle this particular two roofs here, as you see in the exhibit at the police department. Okay, thank you. I'll read what is expected. I wanted to get the background there. Consideration of awarding the contract to the lowest responsive bidder, SunVec, for the police department roof, Coating project, CIP F441, in the amount of $18,960, and I would accept a motion and a second. Madam Vice Mayor, I'd be happy to make a motion to award the contract to the low responsive bidder, Sunbeck, for the Police Department Roof Coating Project, CIP number F441, in the amount of $18,960. I'll second that. Thank you. Mayor Skoog? Abstain. He, he, he did abstain. Oh. It's, it's on there. I saw him do it. Way over there. <laughs> Have it. That passes not unanimously, but six to one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Uh, Norm, keep up the good work. You guys are doing a great job. Okay, the next is the... Uh, Comments from the public. Uh, we'll have uh, Marty uh, Grossman read that. Comments from the public. Consideration and discussion of general unscheduled comments from the public. Those wishing to address the council need not request permission in advance. Any such remarks shall be addressed to the council as a whole and not to any member thereof. Such remarks shall be limited to five minutes unless additional time is granted by the mayor. At the conclusion of the unscheduled comments, individual members of the council may respond to the item addressed at the discretion of the mayor, or they may ask the town manager to review the matter or ask that the matter be placed on a future agenda. Anyone from the public care to comment? If there be no comments, then I would ask for a motion to adjourn. May I make a motion to adjourn? Second, anyone? I'll second the motion. Would you set the vote, Diane? That passes unanimously, Mayor. Thank you. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for coming. <laughs>